thank you for joining us. My name is Ralph Bradley and I'm here with my father, John Bradley, to discuss his early memories of skiing in New England during the 20s and 30s. Skiing today is a very popular sport. The National Sporting Goods Association reports in 2011 that there were 6.9 million skiers. But today's skiing got its start in the United States with a few pioneering families in the 1920s, including the Rockefellers and Harrimans. Austrian board Sig Bruchmeier established the first American school in a small, quiet town of Sugar Hill, New Hampshire. Previously, visitors came to Sugar Hill only in the summertime to escape the city heat. They would stay at grand hotels such as Sunset House and Peckett's Inn. One reason that Sugar Hill was popular was that Bostonians and New Yorkers had real access to this town. As automobile use increased, tourists no longer were limited to areas that had only rail access. And also, Sugar Hill was deforesting greatly at the time, so it was not nearly as pretty as it was at the very beginning. So, business at these Grand Sugar Hill hotels declined rapidly. Packets Inn then needed a new source of revenue, but owner Robert Packard didn't know how to do this. His daughter Kate had just returned from Switzerland where she had studied the culinary arts and skied in her spare time. She convinced her father to turn Peckett's Inn into a skiing resort because it had all the necessary amenities. It was located on a hill that was previously a cow pasture where it could be friendly for beginner skiers and it had massive beautiful views of the presidential mountains. Kate was instrumental in establishing both a ski school and skiing as a sport. She really is the mother of American skiing. She recruited European instructors to come to Sugar Hill. Thus, the birth of the ski industry occurred from the economic response to a declining summer industry. Today, I'm interviewing my father, John Bradley, who was in one of the pioneering skiing families of the 20s. His parents and siblings have many fond memories of this time. He will share some of these memories with us. Before I start this discussion, I'd like to give a special thanks to Sarah Putnam, who has worked with John on preserving and making the old skiing movies available in digital form. And I'd also like to thank Rosemary Attridge for filming this for us. Daddy, thank you for joining us today. Well, I'm, I'm delighted. So, Daddy, we're going to start... And can you just share with us uh, some of your early memories? Your, your, the first memory of your going to ski and uh, the first time when your father started taking these uh, moving pictures. I have vague memories of uh, being uh, skiing down on a straight uh, uh, hill, in, uh, a gentle straight hill in Antrim, New Hampshire. We were up there, Bradley family and the Malcolm Lang family were up there uh, for winter sports and uh, skiing for my parents was just beginning and for me it was very much beginning. And your father started filming uh, when in 1928 you said the, the uh, late part of 1928 the winter of 1928, he took uh, moving pictures of uh, my uncle Tom Cabot uh, uh, ski oaring behind an automobile uh, <coughs> and falling. Uh, <laughs> that uh, was so hideously uh, dangerous in the eyes of New Hampshire uh, that it was outlawed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, also, uh, uh, he had pictures of Tom and Virginia Cabot teaching them, themselves how to ski. And uh, uh, as uh, ski instructors, Tom Cabot was uh, uh, much more lenient about speed of his <laughs> pupils. <laughs> and he was skiing awfully fast and falling uh, spectacularly. And jumping, for God's sake. 
So, uh, both uh, your, your uncle and your parents were part of this pioneering yeah, force. Yeah. Uh, and I suspect that uh, your uncle Tom and your father both enjoyed skiing, but they both uh, used different approaches. Uh, well, no, the, uh, my father uh, <clears throat> tried to use his strength to keep erect, and uh, my uh, Uncle Tom was much uh, more resilient, and uh, uh, both in, when he was upright and when he was uh, hitting the snow, uh, yeah. So we're going to see some uh, movie clips of the various things that um, my father has discussed. He, we will see the moving pictures of uh, uh, the uh, car towing the skier, and we're going to uh, have pictures of Tom Cabot skiing. We're going to have pictures of Eleanor Bradley skiing, Ralph Bradley skiing, and John Bradley skiing with his siblings. Please remember that back in the 1920s, movie filming was quite inexpensive to buy the film, to develop the film. So one had to use these clips with great economy. So what we'll see are quick clips of various scenes throughout Sugar Hill. Now, can you just give us, uh, share with us one memory that, that just stands out, might not be your most favorite time, but, but one memory of skiing with your father. Uh, in 1931, uh, we, uh, late the, the, uh, winter, uh, we went to, uh, to Pinkham Notch and uh, we climbed up the, the fire trail uh, on foot. My f father arranged a, s a small rope to pull our skis up behind us. Uh, we climbed up to the, uh, the, the shelter up there bef before the, the, the uh, uh, getting into Tuckerman Ravine. Uh, the name of the shelter I forgot where it uh, And um, and I got my skis together uh, by on, and I headed down on the fire trail. Boy, I'd never do that today. Mm -hmm. It was soft snow, and I don't know that my skis were waxed. I, I doubt that they were, because I came down live. Uh, and uh, I was way ahead of my father, uh, who fell and uh, not only dislocated his shoulder, but he, he, he did uh, come to grief. Uh, Without my, I was not present. I was ahead of him, and he was worried about me. And uh, uh, I uh, got down to uh, Joe Dodge's place and uh, started making a snowman. And my father asked people if they'd seen a, a, a little boy down there, and he didn't know where I was. And they said, "Oh yeah, he's down there making a snowman." <laughs> And uh, there, we're going to see some footage of skiing down Tuckerman's. And when uh, you and I saw it yesterday together, you said, oh boy, that is dangerous. And, and a lot of people uh, skiing fast and out of control. And skiing right down into the mess of people in the bottom of the bowl there. And uh, that's just where you get uh, accidents, is uh, in a more concentrated form even then at the, at the uh, 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 base of a ski lift where people are standing around and, and uh, some uh, show-offs want, uh, want to ski in fast and, where, and stop close to everybody standing. Uh, and that's where they get lots of, uh, lots of ski hikes. What was your first, uh, what was the first year that you rode the ski train? 1930, I think. I 1930? Okay. Two trips then, I barely remember them. I was not all that pleased by the snow train at the time. I'm not confident at all about skiing. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you go with your father? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where, what mountain did it go to? Oh, I, 
I know that Penny Mountain was there a couple of times, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, a nice view of uh, Lake Winnipesaukee, and uh, it was pretty open country except for barbed wire fences. Didn't help. A lot of times I saw pictures of people trying to go over the barbed wire fence with their skis on. Yeah. Daddy, can you share with us some of your memories of early ski school? Uh, <clears throat> I did not go to any ski school for uh, several years after, uh, after I even started skiing. Uh, I think. Uh, so you started skiing without any lessons? Without any lessons. Oh boy, okay. So uh, you you self taught then? Yeah, we, everybody did. The movies, uh, uh, my father show how we coped with that, and uh, uh, the, the early instruction was not all that helpful. Uh, uh, the skiing instruction nowadays is much better, and people are skiing. Uh, pretty uh, competently after uh, one season's worth of uh, lessons. But uh, in those days we all just had our balancing uh, capabilities and desire for freedom and uh, uh, our uh, animal uh, instincts. Uh, what is what is it? Uh, uh, the great economists say the animal. Uh, it was uh, John Maynard Keynes. Yeah, yeah. Animal spirits. Animal spirits. Love of speed. Uh, love of speed and. This ends our presentation on John Bradley's memories of early skiing in the 1920s and the 1930s. And I want to thank my father, not only for sharing his memories, but also for continuing the tradition and giving us as children the same opportunities that he had. And we, as his children, had very wonderful memories. Daddy, thank you yeah. so much. Well, it was fun having children, yes, and playing with them. Yeah. And, and, and we're going to end this by uh, my father giving the traditional yodel. So when we went skiing, uh, the yodel was our alarm clock to wake up in the morning so we could be the first ones in the mountain. So, Daddy, can you give everyone a farewell yodel? Hello! That's it. Great. Thank you.